All right, welcome back. We are talking about schizophrenia, this complicated, complex mental health condition that is so important to be familiar with what it really is and what it isn't as well. If you're gonna work in the field of social services, as I've said previously in one of these other videos, schizophrenia is not as commonly diagnosed as substance abuse problems or uh, mental health, like depression or anxiety or bipolar disorder, but it is fairly common. It is, it is common enough that if you work in the field of social services, even if you don't work in the field of mental health counseling in some way, it's good to be familiar with this disorder, this condition called schizophrenia. So we've talked about the first two of the five core symptoms of schizophrenia, hallucinations and delusions. Let's talk about the last three. And the next two, symptom number three, symptom number four, if, that, if, we're keep, if you're keeping count, are both what we call disorganized symptoms, disorganized speech and disorganized behavior. So in addition to hallucinations and delusions, a person with schizophrenia has more than that going on. So if we're going to diagnose someone with schizophrenia, they aren't just hallucinating and delusional. Usually we, there are some additional symptoms. And the first, the next two are pretty straightforward. And again, each of these can also look a number of different ways. Number one, here's the first, here's the third one, really. First one for this video, disorganized speech, real simple. Now, again, some people with schizophrenia, when you talk to them, they are completely coherent. You can understand what they are saying. They speak to you clearly. Maybe their speech is kind of rushed a little bit or whatever, but they, but you can understand what they're saying. That is not uncommon. What probably though is more common is with people with schizophrenia, very common and very often, they have patterns of what we call disorganized speech. And it really is what it says it is. If this is not a symptom that has to be there all the time. What's more common is they have periods where you're, they're totally understandable. And then there are times when you don't know what they're talking about, okay? So disorganized speech could look at a bunch of different ways. So, so speech patterns that we would say are kind of rambly, they're off, they're, they're kind of uh, off, they're just not on topic. They kind of get off on, on side conversations and chase a bunch of rabbits, hard to kind of keep them kind of focused. Um, or it's incoherent, they're talking to you and you don't have any idea what they're saying. Um, you know, again, I keep referencing back my own experiences. Uh, many years ago, I was running a group in a mental health clinic and I had some clients in, in my group who had um, different mental health conditions, including a gentleman who had schizophrenia. And um, he was very disconnected and he normally was not like that, but his symptoms were real severe that day. And I remember any time that I would call on him, he would not respond. And then out of the blue, he would he would interrupt the group and he would say blue and black, blue and black. And I would say, what? And he would he was looking at me, blue and black, blue and black, you, you and blue and black. And I was like, OK, I and that's all I would say. I had no idea what he meant. And I said, anything else? He'd say, no, blue and black. OK, so I moved on to someone else. Right. I had no idea what he was. He knew what he was talking about. I had no idea what he was talking about. People with schizophrenia, sometimes that's not uncommon. Those kind of interactions, just kind of incoherent. I mean, I know you're saying blue and black and you keep saying you, I, but I, what does that mean? I have no idea what that means. And then he would just stop, right? And then maybe the next time he would talk, he would be totally understandable. And so that, so the, so this disorganized speech patterns are not uncommon with schizophrenia. The phrase word salad is a good phrase that we hear you hear sometimes. I, I give you that in your PowerPoint slides. Word salad means just a jumble of words. Someone's talking real fast and the words are just kind of random, kind of, kind of like blue black a little bit, just kind of random, not sure what they're saying. It's kind of a jumble, a mixture um, of words. Um, I remember many, many years ago when I was doing a clinical internship, I was a graduate student and I did a clinical internship in a uh, veterans affairs, a VA hospital where uh, clients had chronic mental illness. And I remember uh, one of the first things they asked me to do was to sit in every time the doctors and nurses, the psychiatrists and the nurses and the social workers, when they did their rounds, they would go around and talk about all the clients. And I remember very, very early on hearing nurses and doctors say things like this about clients. Yeah, she's real tangential today. They would use the word tangential. I had no idea what that meant. Or they would say, yeah, he's doing much better. He's less tangential today. Well, the term tangential has to do with speech. And so what's called tangential speech is a common uh, symptom of bipolar one disorder and schizophrenia. And it just means where people get off on a tangent. They'll start talking to you about one thing and they just change subject in midstream and just go off on a tangent. 
and maybe you got to bring them back and maybe they'll come back to the to the to the topic at hand maybe they won't or they just change they, they talk about this talk about this talk about and just kind of in the middle of a conversation they have multiple different kind of conversations going like at one time i give you a video clip in the in the module this week from the soloist from the beginning of the movie the soloist gives you a great example of tangential speech where jamie fox's character is being interviewed and talked to by this guy, Steve Lopez, who just who he just met. And he's kind of nervous. And and as he talks, it's just he's just rambly, we would say. He's tangential. And you ask him, you ask him a simple question and he right just kind of goes up on a tangent. So those are all examples. Word salad, rambly speech, tangential speech, uh, disorganized patterns, consistent and persistent organized patterns of disorganized speech is the third symptom we would look for in schizophrenia. Again, just because someone has disorganized speech, does that mean that they have schizophrenia? No, but it's fairly typical. It's common, uh, something that we see with this disorder called schizophrenia, disorganized patterns, persistent and consistent patterns of disorganized speech. Related to that is the fourth symptom, and it's what we call consistent and persistent patterns of disorganized behavior. So we all have a pattern of behavior we engage in every day, right? Some of us are more predictable and more structured. Others of us are a little bit more disorganized, not a big deal. But the thing with people with schizophrenia is people oftentimes have real short attention spans. They will start projects and just quit. They'll engage in odd unusual behaviors like walking out of the house in just their underwear. It'll be a freezing cold day and you want to, and it's time to go get lunch and you say, Hey, let's go get some lunch. And they, they're, they're in their house. They've got nice warm pajamas. It's freezing cold outside and they come out to go to lunch with you. And they've got on flip flops, a tank top and shorts. And you're like, Hey, it's freezing cold. And they're like, what? Go put on some warm clothes. No, I'll be okay. And they, and they, and they try to go to lunch with you in a tank top and shorts in 32 degree weather and you have to make them change their clothes. Um, they get in the shower with their clothes on. Um, they try to wash their hair, but they don't use any shampoo, stuff like that. They um, just disorganized, kind of scattered kind of behavior patterns of, um, of behavior that we oftentimes see. Um, the example, I give you an example, I believe in the module this week. Uh, it's an example, again, from my own experience. I talked to a lady one time, actually she was a member of my church. And uh, her son, who was in his late 20s, she was his caregiver. He had schizophrenia. He would get on and off of his medication. That's a whole nother story. It's very, very common with mental health conditions. People get on their medicine and they stop taking it. This guy would not stay on his medication. He had medicine a doctor prescribed to him that if he took it, he was fine. He would not stay on it. And when he got off of it, all of his symptoms came back. She sought me out because she just wanted advice on how to handle that. And she described for me how he was off of his medication and how she would come in, get up in the morning, and he had been up in the middle of the night, and he had hit, she comes into the kitchen, and everything in the pantry is on the floor. Not like trashed, like stacked in the floor, right? He's unloaded the pantry in the middle of the floor. He's in bed asleep. She says, why did you do that? He said, oh, I was looking for something. She talked about how she had pictures hung on the wall. He would take all the pictures off the wall and just put them on the ground. And she'd say, why are you doing that? And he said, I just like them on the ground. And she'd say, put them back on the wall. He put them on the wall. She'd turn around and he'd be back on the ground. And she's like, she would ask me, why does he do that? She said, it's not like bad. I mean, it's just, it just drives me crazy. I don't know why he does that. He'll do bizarre, weird stuff like that. I found the dishwasher. I found the washing machine running the other day. And I said, are you doing laundry? He said, yeah. She said, I went in there and opened the, the washing machine. There was no clothes in it. <laughs> she said, washing machine's empty. He's running it empty. Are you washing clothes? Yeah. And she's like, there's no clothes in the washing machine. All of that is about, is, there, is under the heading of disorganized behavior. That kind, that's, those kind of behavior patterns are very testing and they're very trying. If you're the caregiver of a loved one with someone with schizophrenia, those kind of behaviors are not uncommon and they can be really frustrating. Again, sort of like disorganized speech. That type of behavior is not usually all the time. It, it, it comes and goes or periods. And that's that, and, and this lady from my church, that's what she said. She said, you know, he'll do that for a couple of days. And then for, I don't know, for several days or a week or two, he's totally normal. 
And then kind of out of the blue, I'll go and look outside. He's standing outside, you know, with no clothes on or a little few clothes on. He's out walking around, you know, and, and outside in the middle of the night, rambling around. I bring him in the house. I don't know why he does that. All of that falls under the heading of disorganized behavior. I also wanted to give you this. Another example of disorganized behavior before we talk about negative symptoms is what we call catatonia. Have you ever heard of the term catatonic behavior? So catatonic behavior or catatonia is also not uncommon in schizophrenia. It, it falls under the heading of disorganized behavior. And what that is, is basically this. Sometimes, sometimes especially in severe cases of schizophrenia, people can become catatonic. And what that means is that they will go through periods where they're kind of zombie or mannequin-like. Their body becomes real stiff and they may move in odd, unusual kind of movements. So I can just kind of move a little bit like that. They may even hold their hands like that. And, and so, and I've had clients before who, you know, would come to a group I was leading and they would just sit, they would sit up straight, real stiff like this. And you would speak to them and they would talk to you, but then when they would turn, they wouldn't turn their neck and look, they'd have to turn their whole body. Right, a little, little odd, a little unusual. It's a neuro, it's a neuromotor thing that's common in schizophrenia called catatonic behavior. They may have real blank face, real blank stare. They may not respond. They may, their, 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 their mouth may get kind of frozen open like that. I'm not trying to be funny or anything, but that's just an example of how it could look, right? And so sometimes with, sometimes with schizophrenia, people can be catatonic. And, and, and again, that's, that's another example of a symptom that tends to kind of come and go. We usually only see catatonia in severe cases of like untreated, un misdiagnosed schizophrenia, real severe chronic schizophrenia is usually occasionally people will be catatonic. Uh, mom or dad goes in to wake up their son in bed. He's laying in bed stiff as an ironing board, just laying, just looking up at the ceiling, right? And they, they, they shake him and he says, yeah. And they say, it's time to get up. And he says, okay. And it's almost like he can't move. It's almost like he's paralyzed. His body's paralyzed. And then after 20 minutes, he gets out of bed. I've had clients before, parents say, what is that? I mean, it freaks me out when, he, when that happens. And that's what we call catatonia or catatonic behavior. All of that falls under the, uh, the heading of disorganized behavior. Those are common kinds of symptoms with schizophrenia. So we've covered four, delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, disorganized behavior. We are moving really fast through these. That's okay. That's what we do in this class. Here's the last symptom, negative symptoms. Remember the first four that just we just covered, delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, disorganized behavior are example we call positive symptoms. They are present. We can identify them and see them. They're positive symptoms. The last fifth symptom is what we call negative symptoms. So the term negative here does not mean bad. The term negative here means lacking or missing. And so the word deficit is a good example. So here's what that means. Um, people with schizophrenia often exhibit negative symptoms. In other words, they, they have many things that they are lacking. And, what the, and usually what it's connected to is social and emotional interaction. Some of you may know someone who has autism spectrum disorder, maybe an adult or a child. And, you know, one of the ways we diagnose autism spectrum disorder is we look for areas of deficit. And people, kids, especially with autism spectrum disorder, for example, they won't look you in the eye when you speak to them. That's a deficit. It's a social deficit. They won't come when you call them. They won't look at you. They won't. You, you go to hand them a toy. They don't even pick it. They just look at it and then they walk away. They like it totally blow you off and ignore you. You tell them a funny joke or you tickle them and they don't laugh. It's kind of like blank, right? And so that's very, very common with autism spectrum disorder. Well, schizophrenia and autism spectrum disorder are two separate things, but that's kind of what these negative symptoms are. So people with schizophrenia oftentimes have a lack of emotional reaction or response. You call them by name, they don't respond. You say, hey, how you doing? They're looking right at you, but they stare right through you. Or you call them by name and you speak to them and they look away from you while they talk. They answer you, but they look away. Um, you tell a funny joke. Everyone laughs and they just are like blank. And they say, hey, did you get that joke? And they go, yeah, that was really funny. Like a monotone speech, you know, no expression of emotion. Their voice is what we call, their voice is flat. Their affect, the word affect just means how we express emotion through our face and our voice. It's flat. Flat just means, it just means no emotion. So people with schizophrenia, oftentimes their affect is flat. 
Um, they don't. Um, they don't respond to social interaction. They don't initiate conversations. They don't maintain conversations. They isolate themselves um, away from um, people. Uh, just again, a lack of emotional or verbal expression. Uh, real blank, flat kind of affect, we would say. We see that with depression a lot. We see it with bipolar disorder sometimes. We see it with autism spectrum disorder. We also see it with schizophrenia. So all of these are examples of negative symptoms. Again, the word negative means lacking or missing. And it has to do with social and emotional interaction. Does that mean that people with schizophrenia don't socially interact with people? No. Does it mean that they don't have emotions? Well, they do have emotions. It's just the expression of those emotions and the and the and what we call reciprocity. Reciprocity means reciprocal, two-way. So in most relationships, you know, you ask someone a question, they respond. You you lift your hand to shake their hand, they shake your hand. You give them a you put you put your hand up for a high five. They give you a high five. You say, hey, man, I appreciate you helping me this morning. They say, you're welcome. It's reciprocity. Two-way two -way social interaction. Um, you say to them, hey, I want to visit with you. Can I talk to you for a second? Most of us would say, sure, or whatever. You sit down, have a conversation. People listen. People with schizophrenia, a lot of that is lacking. You go to give them a fist bump. I've done this many times with clients. You go to give them a fist bump, and they just look at you. And you're like, okay. You go to give them a handshake. A lot of times with clients, first time you meet them, hi, I'm Glenn. You go to shake their hand and they, they're not, they just look at you like, like they don't know what to do. So you say, all right, no, no worries. Right. You say, you doing okay today? And they just stare at you. You say, okay, good. Right. So lack of, so all of those are negative symptoms. They're this lack of emotional, social interaction, reciprocity, uh, you know, missing deficit kinds of things. Again, are those kinds of symptoms present all the time? No, not usually. Usually it's kind of a come and go kind of a thing. In chronic cases of schizophrenia, well then oftentimes um, it is more, it's more chronic, but more, more often than not, uh, what's more common is it's kind of a come and go kind of thing. So all of those are examples of negative, um, negative symptoms. So again, five core symptoms of schizophrenia are delusions and hallucinations. Those are the first two. The two disorganized, disorganized speech, disorganized behavior, and negative symptoms. For someone to be diagnosed with schizophrenia, a couple of important ideas. Usually we would look for three or four of these five, maybe not all five, sometimes all five are present, but usually we would look for three or four of these five that are present on a consistent basis. And they're not, um, and we, again, we would look for more of a longer pattern. Number two, with schizophrenia, we would want to rule out substance abuse and addiction. Now, that gets tricky, which we'll talk about a little bit later this semester, because many people with mental health conditions abuse substances. So many people with schizophrenia have drug and alcohol problems. But we don't diagnose schizophrenia. I'll say it this way. We do not diagnose anyone with schizophrenia. If we believe that the cause, the primary cause of the symptoms is substances, that's more of an addiction, substance use disorder diagnosis, not schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a diagnosis we would use when we've ruled that out. We say, you know what, this person may be getting high all the time <laughs> or drinking a lot, but that's not why they're paranoid. They're drinking because they're paranoid. They're not paranoid because they're drinking. They're drinking because they're paranoid. So again, separating all that out is difficult sometimes. But the idea is, if someone's paranoid, it, are they paranoid because of their because of schizophrenia, or are they paranoid because of the drugs they're using? If we feel like they're paranoid because of the drugs they're using, that's a substance use disorder. But if we feel like no, the reason why they're paranoid is because I mean they're paranoid even when they're not using, and we feel like their paranoia has more of a chronic, you know, kind of a long term kind of thing, that that then that is schizophrenia. We also too would want to rule out dementia and Alzheimer's. So again. Key idea, dementia in Alzheimer's almost always begins late 50s and above. So if you have a person you're interviewing and they have delusions and some of these kinds of symptoms and they're 65 and you ask their family, how long have they been acting like this? And you say, just a couple of years. That could be dementia or Alzheimer's because the symptoms did not start until later in life. Schizophrenia, all, almost always, 99.7% of the time, 
the symptoms start early in life. When you ask family members or people, when, how long has he been acting like this? They say since he was about 19, he came home from college. That's schizophrenia, potentially. That's not Alzheimer's or dementia. That's too young for Alzheimer's and dementia. But if the age of onset is early, again, 18 to 25, almost always, with schizophrenia, it's sort of like bipolar disorder, sort of like depression and other anxiety disorders. When we ask people, when did you first notice these kinds of problems? They almost always say, well, back when I was in high school or back when I was in college or right when I was in the military, I was about 23. That's pretty typical. Very, 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 very common. So we would want to rule out dementia, Alzheimer's. We want to rule out um, substance use, substance addiction, um, those kinds of things as well, too. In our next module, let me give you a little preview and then we're going to then we'll be done with this portion of, of this lecture. In our next module, we're going to talk about major depressive disorder and bipolar one disorder. And we're going to come back and talk about how a lot of what we just talked about, we sometimes see with both depression and bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder and depression are different from schizophrenia. But sometimes we see an overlap of those two. And sometimes people with bipolar disorder, for example, can be real grandiose, can be real. They're, they, they can have disorganized behavior, disorganized speech, for example. And so that's why it's important to make a good understanding of what is really kind of going on here. But we'll talk more about that later. OK, come back to the next little mini video. All of that is the overview of schizophrenia. We have not talked yet about the second diagnosis that I want you to be familiar with in this section, schizoaffective disorder. Come back for the next video and you'll be good to go. Have a good one. See you then.